Question, is it building Lego that's fun or playing with it after? If you're like me, the answer is building Lego. Playing with it, not so much. Not to mention the cost and trying to find space on those already overcrowded display shelves. So learn how to build Lego on your computer with BricklinkStud.io program and you can build as much Lego as you like, including any official Lego set, for free. Whether it's Lego Technic, Star Wars or anything. Start with something simple like this New York architecture set and build up to a bigger set like this Eiffel Tower or a really complex set like this Welcome to Apocalypseburg set from the Lego Movie 2. With all the extra experience you'll get, you'll soon be experimenting with MOCs and opening the world of Lego to all kinds of possibilities. So here's an introduction to using stud.io that you can download for free from bricklink.com. Let's get straight into this. I want to keep this as simple as possible for now. This is the screen that you'll see when you first open Studio. There is an option to watch a tutorial, which I do recommend, but we'll cover everything that's covered in that tutorial in this and more. So let's close this window for now and start by importing an official Lego set that we can use to really learn the basics. So to do that, you click on File, Import, Import Official Lego Set. So I've chosen this set number 31031, Rainforest Animals Creator Set. Click on ASP Palette rather than Scene and Import. Click on the first PDF listed to open the instructions. This is the frog we're going to build. Scroll down to page five. And this is where we'll start, but feel free to come back and build the rest of this set once you finish this tutorial. I've selected this frog as it's only 32 pieces and it covers a lot of the basics in terms of finding bricks, camera movements, brick movements, connecting bricks, grouping and ungrouping bricks, copying bricks, and recoloring bricks, all the main tools you'll need to build in stud.io. By default, you'll have the color palette and the step list open, and also the imported parts list or palette along the bottom here. To bring this up onto the screen, just click tab. So let's start with the first part. You can just find by scrolling, or you click on the category list on the left here, we know it's a plate, two by four, there's the piece there. Click to drop it in the middle, you'll see the outline changes from green to blue. So the piece is now in place. Before we carry on with the building though, I just want to go through the camera movements as this is really important to get down before going any further. The first thing is zooming in and out, which is just using the mouse wheel or if you're using a trackpad, just two fingers sliding up and down. So let's just zoom in a little bit first. Then if we want to rotate the camera, it's right click and drag with the mouse. And then to pan the camera, it's left click and space bar and drag to move it up and down or to recenter the part. You've also got these viewport options then click on any of these buttons to select one of these preset views. Okay, so now we've figured out how to move the camera around, let's figure out how to start moving the bricks around. Let's just zoom out a little bit first, scrolling the mouse wheel, and then click on the brick to select it. Just click on the arrow keys, spin the brick around, or to flip it on its end or side, depending on the orientation of the brick. If you right click and drag to look at the side of the brick, then clicking on the up and down arrows will flip it on its side. If you right click and drag to move the camera around so that you're looking at the end of the plate, then the up and down arrows will actually stand it on its end. Another way of moving the brick around is just to click on it to select it, left click, and then just drag it around the screen and it will move around. That will make more sense when there are other bricks to connect it to, as the program works out how to snap the pieces together automatically. So then a third way to move the pieces around is to click on the part. That brings up this little movement icon. When you mouse over it, it splits into two and you've got the option to either rotate or move the part along the X, Y and Z axes. Let's click on the axis movement icon first. You can see that brings up these three arrows. 
you click on the one you want to move it along and the part will move along half a brick at a time. Let's click off that and back on. This time let's look at rotation. When we click on that, again you have three options of axis of rotation. Let's click on this one to spin it around. And if you click in the center and drag that around, you see the circle goes red and the angle changes in the middle in increments of five degrees at a time. If you want finer control over the angle of rotation, when you click down, drag outside the circle until it turns blue. And then when you move it, you'll see you get very fine increments moving fractions of a degree at a time. If you know the angle you want, you can just type it in. Now let's take a look at connecting bricks by actually building a model. So we just need another 2x4 plate for step 2. Now to get a copy of this piece, there's a couple of different ways of doing that. Right click and drag to move this into the same orientation as in the instructions. Now to get a copy of this piece, click on it and then just click C and there's the duplicated part. I can then move it through 90 degrees with one of the side movement arrows and drag it and drop it in place. Of course I could have just selected the part from the list again, which if you remember was click tab and then find it there. If I've got a brick selected that I don't want, you just click escape to get rid of it. So let's look at the next step. So step three is we add a couple of hinges. So already we're into a slightly more interesting piece. Click tab to bring up the parts list. And then the hinge is one of the categories. We'll click on that and there is our hinge. Click to bring it up. But you'll notice this hinge is fully open and rigidly held in that position. So how are we going to flex it? Well, let's drop it down first of all, click. And then you notice there's some text along the bottom right here, a few options. So click on release to break it into the component parts. Then you'll need to click off the part to deselect and then click back on just one of the sides of the hinge. And then you can rotate it into the ideal position. Mouse over the movement icon, choose the rotation option, click on the red arrow and let's move that round so that's got about a 30 degree angle. Notice the angle is actually 150 degrees, which is 180 minus 30, but that's a 30 degree angle between the two halves of the hinge. If we now want to move it into position, we'll need to connect the two halves together again so the whole hinge moves as one. There are a couple of different ways of doing that. We can either drag a box around the parts to select all of them, and then click Create into Submodel, OK. Let me just release that to show you the other way of doing it. Click off that. Or you hold command down and click on all the various parts you want to select. Once selected, click create into submodel. You can rename it if you wish and then OK. And there's your angled hinge. Let's rotate it through 90 degrees with one of the side movement arrows. Just going to right click and rotate the camera so we can see from a better angle. And you can see it's already perfectly lined up for this side of the model. So let's just drag and drop that in place. And we want another one for the other side. It's already selected, so just click C to copy. But this one you can see is not at the right angle, but as I bring it over, it snaps into the correct angle. So that can be really useful when you want it, but as we'll discover later, you don't always want it, and I'll show you ways around it. Escape to get rid of the extra part. Right click and drag to move it back into the same orientation as the instructions. Let's look at the next step. Tab to bring up the parts list. This one is a modified brick. Select brick modified and there's the part. Click on it, side movement arrow to get the rotation, drag and drop it into place, click C to copy, 
spin it around with a couple of clicks of the side movement arrow and drop it into place. Nice and simple. Escape to get rid of the extra unwanted part. The next piece is a round plate. Tab to bring up the parts list. Go down to plate, click plate round, and there's our part. Click on it. And then we can just bring it under the piece and connect it. You can see it drops into place, no problem at all. But if the part becomes hidden when you're placing it underneath another part, you may need to change the orientation of the camera angle to see better. So let me just show you that. I'll move the part to one side for a moment and drop it down there. Right click and drag to reposition the camera. Left click and drag to drop the part into place. Left click to place. Right click and drag to reposition the camera. The next step is just placing a couple of L-shaped plates. But as you can see, it's adding it to these hinges which are already at an angle. And the problem is that it will try to snap to the same angle as those hinges rather than keeping the alignment to the other parts as it shows in the diagram. So let's give it a try. Tab to bring up the parts list. Plate, there's our corner plate piece. Click on that to bring it up. So that's in the correct orientation to drop under the left hinge. But when we try to do it, ah, you see it snaps into the same orientation as that hinge. And if we turn snap off, it just doesn't connect at all. Well, let's turn snap back on. So you can either place the part in the correct position, but at the wrong angle, click to place the part. And then once it's in position, click on it again to bring up the movement icon and select rotation. Click on the rotation arrow and then move it 30 degrees. You already know that it's 30 degrees back into the desired position. That's quite an easy way of doing it, but there is another way. We'll click on it and click C to copy. We'll bring it over to the other side. We'll use the side movement arrows to rotate it into the correct alignment. But this time we're going to use the connect function. When you use the connect function, the pre-existing alignment is always kept the same. So let's click that in place, escape to get rid of the extra part. And this time we're going to click the connect tool, which is a new function on the toolbar at the top. Click on that. Now you can see clicking on that part brings up a number of these blue squares. This is the stub we want, so we just click that blue cube. Now we need to click where that part needs to be attached. So we need to see underneath the hinge. So right click and drag to change the camera angle. And then as we mouse over, we can see the blue cubes appear, showing us the options for where the part could be attached. And then when we click on it, the part just snaps into place. Let's right click and drag to move the camera angle back. Either of those are good options, but you will need to know both of those techniques. Click escape to clear the tool and we'll look at what's next. Now we're simply just adding a couple more plate parts. Now a couple of modified bricks and another plate. Side movement arrow to rotate. C to duplicate, side movement arrow to rotate again. Now this time that just isn't dropping into place. It just does not want to go. So let's place the part to one side. Escape to get rid of the extra part and right click and rotate to move the camera angle to the other side. Now when we pick up the part, it drops into place, no problem at all. So this time a couple more of these corner plates, but this time the part we're attaching it to is not at an angle, so we won't have any snapping problems. You can click on this part and just copy it rather than finding it from the palette if you wish. No problem there. The other one is out of sight though. So again, we're gonna to need to rotate the camera angle for a better view. And then just drop it in place.
Okay, now we're going to learn another interesting feature where we build a small sub-model, and then once we've built it, then we can attach that to the main model. So spacebar, left click and drag to move the model to one side, and then that gives us some space to build the sub-model. Tab to bring up the parts list, and it's a wedge plate, so we just click on wedge. There's the part there. Slip it around, drop it down. Then a jumper plate, click plate modified, and two curved slopes to build up the tongue. Slope, curved, there's the part. C to copy, escape to get rid of the unwanted part. Now we need to turn this into a sub model. So again, you can either click and drag around or Click on each item in turn as you hold down the command button. Once you've got the part selected, click on the text in the bottom right hand of the window, create into submodel, rename if you wish, OK. One thing you do need to be a little bit careful that you don't accidentally include some of the other parts. So when you build these submodels, keep them a little away from the rest of the model so you don't run into that problem. So you've got your submodel now. You can just treat that as a part, click and drag it into place, left click to place it. Again, let's click the space bar, left click and drag to reposition the model. The next piece is half of a ball and socket joint, followed by a wedge. Tab, modified plate. There are the two parts of the ball and socket joint. Movement arrows to rotate, click and drop it in place. Tab to bring up the parts list. And then we can either scroll down or just click on wedge. And there's the wedge brick we need. It's already in the right orientation. Click to place the part. So we need to build another sub-model now to create the rest of the frog's head. Again, let's click spacebar, left click and drag to move the model to one side to make space for the sub-model. Tab to bring up the parts list. There's our wedge plate. Drop that in place. Then plate. Modified plate, the other half of the ball and socket joint. Drop that in place. Two more modified plate parts. Rotate, drop, C to copy, rotate a couple of times and drop that one down on the other side. Escape. And next, a couple of curved slopes and a couple of decorated tiles. Slope curved, there's the part there. Rotate it, drop it in place. C to copy, drop it in place. Escape. Tab to bring up the parts list. Tile decorated, click on the first eye, arrow to flip up, drop it in place, C to copy, drop it in place, escape. So let's try and rotate these eyes now. So click on an eye, click on the movement icon and rotation icon. Let's move the tab around. That looks good to me. Click on the other eye, movement icon, rotation icon, and drag that around. So let's have a look. Remember it's right click and drag to move the camera angle. Maybe not 100% symmetrical. And I think that's looking pretty good. So now we just need to move that top part of the head into position and we're done. So let's click and drag a box around these parts. And again, create into submodel. OK. And then we can just drag it across and connect the two halves of the ball and socket joint. Click it down and spacebar left click and drag to recenter the model. But now we want to open that mouth. So click on the submodel we've just placed, click on the movement icon and rotation, and we can move that. until it's in the position we want. Right click and drag to move it around. And there's the finished model. If you want to recolor any of these parts, you can easily do so from the color palette, but you will need to release any submodels first. So let's click on this submodel, then click release, click and then hold command while you select the parts you want to Recolor. 
Select the color you want from the color palette. That's how you do it. I'm not sure it's any better than before, so let's just change that back. You can just go to Edit, Undo. There's only 32 pieces, but you learned an awful lot of the tools you'll need for building almost any Lego set. But watch out for more advanced tutorials that'll take us through some more complicated sets. If you want a nice rendered image of your work, you can select File, Render Image, choose from these options and click Render. Can take a while though. Well that's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this useful. Let me know in the comments section below if there's anything you need more help with. Watch out for more advanced stud.io tutorials and do please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one.